No matter what goes on in life, no matter what happens in life, no matter what people do to you, no matter what occurs in your life, no matter what, it doesn't make any difference. He's still worthy. It may look bad. It may seem bad. But how many of you know about that scripture? All things. For we know all things work together for the good to them that are, are the call. To them who love God and the call. In this world, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. That's telling me to praise him. If I'm going to be, good, be of good cheer, that means I'm going to praise him. If I'm going to be of good cheer, hey, Sister Montgomery, I'm going to praise him. I'm going to thank him. I'm going to be grateful. I saw the song, I think, I think it was Sunday. Grateful. I'm so grateful for the things that you have done. Yes, I'm grateful for the victories we won. I could go on and on and on about your word. Because I'm grateful, grateful, grateful just to praise you, Lord. Flowing from my heart, all the issues of my heart is gratefulness. <laughs> yes, gratefulness is flowing from my heart. Amen, amen. Good evening to all. God bless you all for being here one more time, one more Tuesday, to be a part of the Sunday School Live with yours truly, Pastor Benita Vance, also known as Pastor B. How y'all doing? I hope y'all had a wonderful day. Hope you had a productive day. Hope everything went your way, a way, a good way. Hope it was good, you know. And even if you didn't get everything done that you wanted to, hey, you made it through. Hmm? Tell the Lord, thank you. I know you might have run into that crazy person, but you didn't lose it. Oh, tell the Lord thank you. You made you went up down the road. You was in that heat. Oh, uh, um, tell the Lord thank you. You made it back home. Tell him thank you. Yeah. See, we miss thanking God for the little things. We want to thank for the big stuff. But when you start thanking God for the little stuff, it's gonna be automatic when the big stuff comes. <laughs> okay. We can talk about that all day. Ah, let's get into this list. All right, let's get into this list. It said Jesus heals a centurion servant. See, I, I'm familiar with this 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 list right here. I start shouting because I'm like, it's so much in this list. It's just it's meaty. It's meaty. It's it's Jesus heals a centurion's servant. You don't. It's not a whole lot of centurions. That wants to be even close to Jesus. Let alone asking him to heal a, heal, heal a servant. But he said Jesus heals a centurion's servant. So I was asking the question. Can somebody get healed through your faith? If somebody tells you say a prayer. Pray for me because I'm going through. Pray for me because I'm dealing with this. Pray for me because... Can you get a prayer through? Will Jesus hear you? Because you come on behalf of somebody else? We're coming from Luke, the seventh chapter, one through ten. See, we we was in we was in the old testament, and you just jumped straight off into the New Testament. That's the way it is, so you got to know where you're going. Alright? Alright. So, Luke the seventh chapter. And we're going to deal with the first 10 verses. Okay? Luke 7, 1 through 10. All right. <clears throat> now, when he had ended all his sins in the audience of the people, he entered into Capernaum. And a certain centurion servant, 
who was dear unto him was sick and ready to die. This man, now a centurion is a soldier. And back then, soldiers had power. They were usually guards had, you know, they had, they were under, uh, they were called centurions because they had a squad of a hundred men. Okay. So he had, he had a squad of a hundred men. So he was over a hundred men, but he said his servant was sick. He could have called the doctor down the street. He could have called the other guy that takes care of people. But he knew somebody else. Say, I don't need a remedy. I don't need medication. <laughs> how many y'all, I mean, how many y'all know people that as soon as they get a headache, they pop on a pill? I said, know some people, I hope I ain't talking to you. But you say you got faith in God. But I'm just, I'm just saying. How many of you know that people that get a headache, they pop a pill? They get a pain, they pop a pill. Instead of saying, God, touch me. God, take this headache. God, I'm having a situation. We want to give it to, we want to take a pill. We want to get some, some uh, ointment. So give it to God. If your faith had not got there yet, okay, get the ointment, get the pill. But if you say you have, your faith is strong, I have faith in grain of a mustard seed. That's nice. It's good to have small faith. But what's your faith doing? Because see what you fail to realize. You can have faith the size of a mustard seed. But it doesn't have the same power. Because if it had the same power. See that seed is not only small. But it's solid. When it's put in the right ground. It will grow bugundously. Yeah I said that word. I came up with it. I think it's a jugandus. Jugandus. Whatever that word is. But it's a big old, big old tree. Hmm? That's what it means. It's small, but it's not going to stay small. Because with the right nutrient, the word of God, faith, prayer. With the right nutrients, it's going to grow big. So your faith shouldn't stay small. And it said, when he, had, when he heard of Jesus... He sent unto him the elders of the Jews beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. Hmm? That's his sister Harden. Ask Jesus first. When he had heard of Jesus, he, the centurion heard of Jesus. He, he told Elsa, I need y'all to tell Jesus come on back. I need y'all to tell Jesus come see me because I need him to help my servant. I need him to heal my servant. He had heard about Jesus. Okay, he had heard about he was giving sight to the blind. He was causing a lame to walk. He was causing the dumb to talk. He had cast out some demons. Wait a minute, there's something about this dude right here. I, mm -mm, mm -mm. What he can do, doctors can't do. What he can do, they can't. Uh -uh. Once he get it done, when he says it's over with, it's over with. Hey, Nikki. So he said, hey, Sister Arthur. So he said, go get Jesus. I need something done for my servant. Some folks won't go to church, but they know to call on Jesus. Y'all better come on in. And the folks in the church ain't trying to call on Jesus. Folks in the world know that Jesus can heal the sick. Folks in the church, hey, London Cole. Folks in the church be like, uh. And when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying that he was worthy for whom he should do this. That he was worthy for whom he should do this, for he loved our nation, and he had built us a synagogue. Now they want to tell Jesus, now they're they going to talk to Jesus on behalf of the centurion. You know, he's a great man. He ain't just anybody. You know, Jesus, you need to come see him, because he's a great dude, and he has he's done some things for us, and and we're happy to have him. He's a hero. You know, he's a local hero. He did these things. Jesus know that. But they're trying to sell him to Jesus. You don't have to sell people to Jesus. You know how you, Lord, I know that ain't right. But Lord, look over, look over the, the wrongness and touch him. No, 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 no. 
they got to come to Jesus for themselves. And they got to ask Jesus for forgiveness. They got to ask for forgiveness themselves. You can't be coming on behalf of somebody. I know, Lord, they just, yeah. Now, you can't intercede. Let, let me explain. Let me fix that. You can intercede on their behalf. But there's something they still have to do to come to Jesus. Because God is not going to enter them in on your ticket. Do you know how many people would, be, would get a pass if God would allow people to enter on somebody else's ticket? But everybody's got to purchase. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Sister Hart. Everybody's got to purchase their own ticket. I can't buy your ticket for you. Sorry. You have to buy your own ticket. And it's not a physical ticket. It's a spiritual ticket. Do you want to go to heaven or don't you? Hmm. So he said, Jesus, you, Jesus, come on see about it. They come on see. And Jesus went with them. He, he knew what was going on. He said he just nicely went with them. Did nobody bother Jesus? He said, okay, let's go. And when he was now not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying unto him, now wait, this man has sent for Jesus to come to the house. But he knew his house was not properly prepared for Jesus' presence. I need y'all to hear what I just said. He asked Jesus to come to his house to heal his servant, but he knew his house was not prepared for Jesus' presence. Y'all know. They know. Y'all know when your house is not presentable for, for Jesus' presence. And we think, come on, Jesus, come on. And you think he's going to come in. I'm going to need you to sweep the kitchen. I need you to vacuum the living room. I need you to make the beds. What's that I smell? So you don't get to come in. The, you, 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 we want Jesus just to come on in. Lord, excuse the mess. Uh, Lord, I know I'll support, but you, mm -mm. The centurion knew who Jesus, well, Jesus wasn't just no fly by night person. He knew Jesus was a master was a teacher, was a healer. And he said, he said his friends, he said, hold up. Lord, don't trouble, trouble, don't trouble yourself. Trouble not thyself. For I'm not worthy that thou shouldest enter under my roof. Wait a minute. Jesus, I haven't lived a life. Ooh, Jesus. I'm not worthy. I got some messed up ways. I'm not worthy for you to come in. I got some throwed offness about me, God. You, I'm not worried. We want you to tell Jesus to come on in. We want him to step over the trash. We want to step over your filthiness. We want to step over your stuff you doing. You know you ain't got no business doing. We want to step over the people that's in your house. No, you ain't supposed to have them in your house. But the centurion said, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute. Lord, don't, don't come in. Stay out there. Don't, I'm not worthy. I'm not even worthy. I'm 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 filthy rags. So. I'm raggedy. So I, since I'm raggedy, don't don't come in. Just just stay right there. Don't do don't. Mm -mm. But we messed up inside. Come on in, Jesus. Excuse the mess. Let me spray. I don't care how good they say Fred Breeze is. Fred Breeze don't kill everything. It is, it's supposed to be the one that didn't, it don't kill everything. It covers it a lot of time. You be like, did I just spray? And that spray that went, that sent them went on out the window. And that's what some people do. They're trying to spray to cover up stuff. Jesus can smell what's going on with you. You still stain. Even though you get to spray, you still stain. Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee, but say in a word, and my wait a minute, hold up, wait, 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 wait a minute, wait one minute. He said, I'm not worthy for you to come in my house. I'm not even worthy to lay eyes on you. 
I haven't got myself ready to serve you. I haven't got myself in position to be the man I need to be. But if you just say the word, oh my God, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Us, the, the, us sanctified folks don't even believe this. Us saved folks don't even believe that God, Jesus can say the word and it'll be done. We want him to show up. Lord, I need you to come on in there. Come on in, Lord. Come on in. He already there. Hey, Sherry. He's already there, but you want him to come on in. He already in. Hey, Sister Snow. But he said, I'm not even worthy for you to come in the house. My house messed up. Those and God, I'm not even worthy. I said word because I'm not even worthy. I just, I'm not even worthy to lay eyes on you because I'm so messed up. But we want to bring, now this man who don't even go to church had more reverence for God, for Jesus, than the scribes and the Pharisees. Come as you are. That don't mean every day. When you come as you are, you bringing yourself to Jesus so he can clean you up. But don't be getting dipping back in sin and stuff and getting nasty and stinking and you won't come as you are. Okay, God, I stink again. You clean me again? Well, you trying to get rid of the guilt. But the centurion said, no. I'm not even worthy to look at you. But we feel that we preach a couple of sermons. Folks don't holler at us. Go ahead now. Preach it. Preach it. God. God, come on in my house. My house is better than their house. My house is clean. And you know my furniture is. is I bought it off the show from the floor. And you know all my curtains. Come out the I come out the best store. I, I, I done been to the store. I, yeah, I got all. I paid for all this. Oh, uh, whose money did you use? I paid for all this. I bought this. But I said, whose money did you use? I'm just saying. I'm just saying what I'm saying. But we feel that we're worthy. When you feel like you're worthy and you deserve, who are you? You won't give God no praise, but you deserve to get his blessings. You won't glorify God, but you thank God owe you, sir. The one that made you owes you something. The one that gave you breath owes you something. You deserve to, what now? I wait. This centurion had more sense and more respect than folks busting the church doors open every Sunday, Wednesday, Friday, Thursday, Tuesday, whatever night y'all go. Sometimes y'all up in church three, four times on a Sunday, still full of hell, still a devil's work, worker. But you play real good. You can, ah, Lord. You can do that real good, but ain't about nothing. God in my house. No, you no. He he not. He's standing outside looking. He says, For I also am a man set under authority, having under me soldiers, and I say unto one go and he goeth, and to another come and he cometh, and to this servant do and he doeth it. I'm a man of authority. I have soldiers. Uh, they do what I say do. They do what I say do. Hmm? But because, you know, I, I have, and you would think that, you know, if I'm this bad, you know, I got people working for me. I got, I got my people with me. Hey, what? They answer to me. So guess what, God, you ought to come in my house because, see, I got folks that I'm running. I tell them to come, he come. I tell him to go, he go. I tell him to do what he do. Hey, these folks answer to me. So, uh, 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 come on here, Jesus. You come on in my house. This man said, I have authority. But it don't mean nothing to you. It means nothing when it comes to you. I got all this power that man has given me. But it means nothing to you. I don't feel worthy of your presence. 
Oh my God. I don't feel worthy of your presence. And we think that we aren't doing God a favor by showing up. You doing God a who by doing what now? They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Do you know what those words mean? We done been lied to and we done lied so long we believe our own lies. Okay, back to the list. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him and turned him about and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great so great faith, no, not in Israel. I, this man here don't really know, don't really understand about having faith. He didn't heard about what I could do, but he respects my power. So <laughs> he respects my authority. So until he said, "God, I can't even occupy the same space. I can't even stand where you said, God, I, I'm nothing compared to you." I got people under me, but that still means that I got a hundred folks under me. You got the whole world in your hands. So I mean, what what am I what am I doing? But God, don't 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 no, don't even come in the house. I, I'm not worthy. God, I can't even come look at you. I just know that if you speak the word, God, you ain't got to show up. God, you if you, if you you if you have time, then okay. But you, Lord, you I'm so trusting. I'm so trusting in you. I I'm so faithful to you. I, I I'm have so much faith in you. I just I just I'm just crazy enough to believe God. If you just speak it, it's gonna be done. I don't need you to lay hands. I don't need you to touch. I don't need you to send lightning out the east, thunder out the west. Mm -mm. Just say the word. And he says, he didn't have to look at me. He didn't have to see me. I didn't have to see his servant. All he, all he wanted me to do is speak the word. And Jesus said, man, this dude got some faith. Because he has belief that my word is so powerful. That my words have healing. My words cause deliverance. And then, and they that were sent, returning to the house, found the servant whole that had. The, found the servant whole that had been. I need y'all to hear me. All Jesus said was, Be thy healed. And when they got back to the house, they found the servant whole. Wait, it said in the second verse, a certain centurion servant who was dear unto him was sick. And ready to die. He was at death's door. But the centurion knew Jesus was coming. He said, y'all go get Jesus. Go get him and tell him to come in. Then they tried to tell Jesus, Jesus, oh, you know, this dude right here, he a good dude. He cool. He Jesus said, oh, well, let's go. Let's, let's go. And then he sent word, wait. Jesus. Uh-uh. My house ain't. Mm. It ain't, it ain't good enough for you. It, it's not, it's not, it's just, it's messed up. It's dirty. It's, it's nasty. It's just stuff. And then me, God, I I can't even look at you because I'm ragged. I'm, 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 I don't, I, I have done some things that's not pleasing to you. I, I've said some things that's not pleasing to you. But God, I, if you just do this one thing for me, just one, just one thing, I just need one thing from you. Just speak it. I, you, you. I have faith to know that if you just say it, my servant, what you say now is going to travel right to my servant. Yee, 
Huh? God's word is good. See, we want to touch folks. We want to lay hands on folks. We want to go, well, baby, if you can't get there where they are, your word, your prayer ought to be strong enough to for God to go from Shreveport to Houston, from Shreveport to Los Angeles, from Shreveport to Colorado. Your word ought to be faith, your faithful faithfulness ought to be hyped up so, and you ought to be connected to God that when you say, God go, God gonna go. On your behalf. Because of your faith. Because of your relationship with Christ. He gonna go. And on your word. You get that phone call. Girl. You paid, prayed for me yesterday. And while you were praying. When we hung on the phone. As soon as I got. And you. Is your faith that strong? Is your faith connected to the God to the point that all you say is God go? God, I can't be there, but I know you touching right now. God, I can't get there, but I know you healing right now. God, I'm not gonna be able to make it, but God go. Is your word that strong? That God will say, okay, I'm going on their behalf. But it said, and then when they was they were sent, return to the house. And he wasn't no more dead, half dead. He wasn't almost dead. He he was whole. Wasn't sick no more. Whatever ailment he had, he was fine. It was gone. When God heals you, he heals you. I wonder, is it? I wonder if he can feel. I wonder if it'll come back. I, I don't know. I know. I know what kind of talk is that? If you have the faith in God to know that God wants you to heal me, I'm healed. Okay, God, I got this condition. I know you're going to help me get rid of it. You're going to help me work through it. You're going to help me to be able to handle it. Because like I said, God ain't going to heal you of everything. Because sometimes we need a thorn in the flesh to help us stay humble. Sometimes we have ailments so we can de be dependent on God. That I say sometimes that God will heal. God will heal at His point in time, but He may keep that ailment there so He can keep your attention. Because sometimes we get healed of everything we like. I'm good. You know, if we, we heal, we might start back eating everything. We get healed, we might start going to places we don't need to be going. So we got to know that once God heals, He heals. Weaning off, that's not healing. I'm trying to stop. I'm trying to quit. Tell God about it. I done heard many folks say they gave it to God. When God take, take the taste. See, you're not, you, you, you're not trying to take the taste away. You're trying to. You know. when you're, but when you say God take the taste, God will take the taste. So they found that servant whole. That have been sick. Let's go to the practical points. We are blessed to have people to intercede for us before the Lord. Yes, we are. We have people to intercede. I hope that you all, everybody have somewhere, somebody to call on. Where they say, I need you to pray for me. And you have no doubt they're going to get a prayer through. For me, that's my mama. That's my dad. Mama needs y'all. Mama, I, dad, I need y'all. Them two gonna get a prayer through. I ain't got to worry about it. If I get it, I'm good. Hmm. I hope everybody on this line has somebody that they can go to. I need you to pray for me. A lot of times when people ask me and say, Pastor B, Benita, I need you to pray for me. I don't just say, okay. I do a prayer. My friend Belinda, she's saying, well, I say, girl, I have to pray for me now. She'll send me a prayer. And sometimes we need that assurance and we need to give people assurance that you know 
that you know that they are pray that you're really praying for them because a lot of folks say I need you to pray for me. Okay, ain't pray, ain't go pray, ain't about to pray. So give them that assurance. You don't have to say a long prayer. God, whatever it is, if they tell you what it is, you say, God, this, this, this. God, I know you can do it. God, in the name of Jesus. We don't have to go into a long prayer. Because sometimes I, you know, I call on Belinda sometimes. And she'll, she'll go in. So she'll go have a whole paragraph and a couple sentences. <laughs> but when she, when she when I read it, I'll be like, oh, Lord, okay. She, okay. And I'll be feeling it too. So that's why I say when you have someone to intercede for you, they be going in for you. And those prayers are answered. When you seriously going in and when you seriously intercede for someone, those prayers are answered through you person may not have that faith may not be where it needs to be but intercede for someone okay you, you you've been saved five years you well her prayer life may not be about that right now huh? that prayer life might not be kicked up like yours so go on in for your sister go on in for your brother we are supposed to intercede huh the holy ghost intercedes for us how would you feel if the holy ghost said no nah, i don't feel like it today. you praying to the lord i Come back tomorrow. Y'all don't want to hear that. Kindness, generosity, and respect can overcome nearly any human barriers. Uh, what? Kindness, generosity, and respect can overcome nearly any human, whatever the situation may be. Be kind. Be generous. Be respectful. It didn't say that they had to be kind to you back. It didn't say they had to be generous back to you. It didn't say they had to be respectful back to you. But you've got to put it out there. You're the saint of God. You're supposed to be different. And if they continue to act silly, depart. You can speak at a distance. You don't have to subject yourself to abuse. Hey, hey, how you doing? Hey, 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 <laughs> they mad, but they spoke. Like, okay, hey, hey, how you doing? I'm good, how are you? They be like, I ain't no cup. But you got to be kind. There you give and receive. I like that. You got to be kind. You got to be generous. And you got to be respectful. We should always approach Jesus in humility and awe. See, that's what the that's what the centurion did. He approached Jesus, he was humble. He didn't approach him like, hey, you know what, Jesus, look up. Oh. Say I'm the man around right here. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm cool and cool and all. I, I, you know, I know you busy and stuff. I mean, but you know, I got this like my dude back here. You know, he, uh, you know, I, yeah, I, you know, I, I don't, you know, I don't go to church like I'm supposed to. But I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, who does? I mean, whatever. Come on in here, Jesus. I mean, come on now. I mean, what? No, he was humble to the point where God, I, mm, mm. You, you, my my house ain't no. I'm not even worthy for you to come in the back door. I'm not worthy for you. I, I, uh, I'm even ashamed to come out before you. He knew his life was messed up. He knew his life was raggedy. He knew he wasn't where he needed to be in God, but he still said, "God, Jesus, if you just say the word." Don't be so haughty when you come. God, I, you know, uh, now you know last week I went to Sunday school and church. And then Tuesday I was listening to Pastor Van. So, I mean, I mean, come on now. I mean, Jesus, you can answer my prayer. Better go find yourself 517,000 seats and sit down, you know. Because God is not like, what are you trying to do? Dog ain't talking to me. So you got to be humble when you come to Jesus. 
Recognizing Jesus' authority is a major part of true biblical faith. You got to recognize his authority. You got to know he has the power and you don't. You are nothing. I mean that in the, in the spiritual sense. You are nothing. You are everything when it comes to God, but you're nothing. Because God gave your breath and he could... What you going to do with no breath? What you going to do with no heartbeat? What you going to do with no lungs? No kidding. What you going to do? Recognize Jesus' authority. Nothing delights our Lord so much as genuine faith in him. Oh, he just loves when you give him true faith. Say, God, I know you can do this. God, I believe that I know you have the power. God, I know you told me in your word to ask in your name. Ask according to your will, God, and that's what I'm doing. God, I believe you. Man. I'm not going to trust a man. I'm not going to trust us. I'm going to trust you, God. Because I know you won't fail God, you won't have to do it. God, I, I don't have to pay you no money for you to get this done for me. No, I, I just give you my faith and I believe that what I need, you're going to come through. And I think Sister Harden just said this not too long ago. Jesus' timing in meeting our needs is always perfect, even if we would prefer a different time frame. Yes, God, I need you to show up Friday at 12 o'clock noon. Not 12.00.01. I need you at 12.00.00. Friday. Need you, Lord. Need you. God don't show up on Friday, but then nothing happen. Didn't show up on Saturday. Didn't show up on Sunday. Monday. Tuesday, all hell breaks loose. But before it breaks loose, God said, I said what? God, you, oh my God. Because you know, if God had sent that money on Friday, you would have spent it by Tuesday. God had blessed you on Friday, you would have messed it up by Tuesday. So God knew you didn't need it to Tuesday, so he sent it on Tuesday. So, I'm just going to say to you, when you ask God for something, don't put no time limit on it. Because every time you put a time limit on it, God say, I think I got, I, I think I got this. But since you got it, I'm, I'm going to wait till you give it back to me. And when you give it back to me, then, okay, we'll talk, okay. So, don't be so caught up in time. Because God is time. And what did it say? A thousand years is as one day. And one day is a thousand years. So it's like time means nothing to God. So when you're asking for something, just wait patiently for it. Go on with your life. Give him praise. Give him glory. Then by the, next, then by the time you don't forget about it, he comes. So as we talked about the centurion's servant, it's it, I mean, Jesus heals his centurion servant. Ask, are you able to intercede for someone and God answer? Because God can do anything but fail. And we are the vessel that he works through. What kind of vessel are you offering God? Is the vessel clean? Is the vessel worthy? Is the vessel, does the vessel give glory to God? Does he love God? God, am I the servant you need me to be? Am I the minister you need me to be? Am I the instrument you can use? Am I the vessel that you can work through? God, what's, where's, my, my, what's, what, where's my humble scale? Am I arrogant? Or am I humble? Do I act humble, but my heart is arrogant? Am I conceited, God? Do I have a nasty attitude? 
fix me good. So when you need me, I'm available. Fix me, God, so when my brother, my sister needs me, I'm available. Fix me, God, so when that intercede for someone, you'll hear me. I won't block what needs to be done because I messed up. Fix me, Lord, today. Because I want to be a worthy vessel. I want to be a worthy vessel. Good enough for you to use. Amen. Amen. I hope that you got something out of the lesson on tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. And as I, I usually always love teaching. And I hope that you enjoyed listening. Amen. We're going to shut this down. It was a good lesson. And if you have any questions, you know you can go in, in the inbox or uh, on here or my personal inbox and ask your questions. But y'all tell me I teach so well. I don't just, you know, I be feeling like I teach it good, but y'all be like, I ain't got no questions because you teach it. You break it down all the way down. It's like, okay, okay, all right. But if you have a question, just let me know. But like I say, feel free to use what I say. You know, I got a couple of people on here who are teachers, and some of them are YouTube family. They got some teachers. I was even told they actually played this, play, do this playback and let me teach their church. And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> so that's a blessing within itself. So I'm grateful for all God does and how he uses me in so many states across the United States. So y'all continue to pray for me. Continue to, to, to love each other. Continue to pray for each other. And I'm going to definitely pray for you. Because, you know, we can't do this thing alone. You know, we got to lean on somebody. We got to have somebody, you know, to lean on and, and, and get, you know, get where we need to be. So, love, love on everybody. Forgive when necessary because he, if we don't forgive, he's not going to forgive you. So, you got to forgive others. I know it may seem hard because some folks, they really stick us good. But if we want to heal, we want to be prosperous, we want to not block our blessings, we got to forgive. We got to love for real. And stop saying that, I forgive you, but I won't forget. That's not true forgiveness. Amen. That's not true forgiveness. If you can't forget it, it's not true forgiveness. If God, uh, uh, if God can forget How would you feel if God held that held that thing against you? You trying to pray to God, and He be like, "Hey, I remember when you did. God, you said you. Hey, yeah, I forgave, but I ain't forget. That's how it is. That that's how it is when you say you forgive somebody, but you won't forget. That's that's you, you get an attitude. Cause see, the devil uses little statements to get us on his side. I forgive you, but I won't forget. That's a devilish approach. That's, 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 that's one of the key values that the devil uses. Here's another one. God, now I don't know where, y'all get, where, where people got this from, not y'all. Where people got this from. God told me to love you. He didn't tell me to like you. Hold up. I love you, but I ain't got to like you. Hold up. That's the devil's weak statement. What it's saying, see... It said, if I, I can love you, but I ain't got to like you. See, but I love you, but I don't like your ways. See, if you keep on concentrating on their ways, you're going to end up not liking them. You're going to end up in the hate category. So, baby, you better say, you, you need to tell the Lord, Lord, I love them. I need you to help me help them with their ways. And God, work on their ways. God, work on me so I don't focus on their ways. Because if you using that statement after a while, you're going to start hating them. You're going to hate them and their ways. Come on. Evaluate the situation. You be saying you love them. I love you, but I can't stand your ways. And then after a while, they ways. You know, you getting on my nerves. That's the next statement. You know what? I can't stand you. Wait a minute. What happened to the love, but you can't? That's how they go. So you're not going to be real about it? Go on out the way. 
Don't fake it till you make it. Don't act like you got it when you don't. If you ain't going to do it for real, you ain't going to do the hokey pokey by putting your whole self in. That, that part, not the hand, we're not going to do the, the give and take thing. We're going to do the put your whole body in or take your whole body out. We got enough folks that put your right right hand in and take your hand. Put your right half in and hand, you shake it up. No, we got too many folks doing that. But we're going to put our, our whole body in or keep our whole body out. God bless you. <laughs> Just pray for me, okay? All right. Love you. Cash out, Zell, if you want to be a blessing to the ministry. If not, I still love you because I'm still going to get a word. <laughs> all right. Love you all until Sunday. Oh, we might not have service on Sunday, but I, I got to see what I'm going to do. But anyway, we're we'll, we going to definitely be on Tuesday. I'm not canceling Tuesday, you know, unless some, some, some for real, for real kitchen. But I'll just let y'all know about Sunday, okay? All right. God bless you. God keep you. It's my prayer. Good night.